or you can grow your own. <laughs> we can't all live far from the maddening crowd, but that doesn't mean we can't all have a touch of the good life. Here in the heart of the urban sprawl lives a man who's enthralled to one particularly rewarding crop. Grapes. For ten years, Marco Boitson has had a thriving backyard vineyard in London's Stoke Newington. And I've heard his Chateau Stokey is worth a trip up to town. But I've also lined up a little surprise that'll take his wine to local wine lovers oh my God. and beyond. Hi, Marco. Hi, Keith. How are you? Marco has one last crop to harvest from his back garden vine. Wow! And a long, sunny, dry autumn has left it packed full of fruity Pinot Noir grapes. What a thing of great beauty, Marco. Yeah, what a lovely totally. thing to have yeah. in your home. Yeah. On your home, climbing up your home. Whilst Pinot Noir is a difficult variety to grow, it does prefer the cooler regions and produces some of the finest wines in the world. So are you happy to just crack on and get picking? Yeah. Are we picking Let's the lot? If you like gardening, if you enjoy wine, it's a great hobby to have. A mature vine like Marco's can provide enough grapes for over a dozen bottles of wine. What discourages some people is the fact that it's three years before you'll have your first harvest. But patience pays off. And our homegrown wine industry is ripening nicely with over 350 commercial vineyards in Britain and a growing reputation for top-notch bubbly and crisp whites. <laughs> My children used to crush them with their feet when they were small. You've got a big grown-up child here today with big feet. <laughs> I had a good shower this morning, I've got clean socks on, and I promise you my athlete's foot cleared up at least a week ago. Great. <laughs> so just straight in there. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lovely feeling. God, so much juice. I mean, I'm already literally up to my ankles in grape juice. It really works, doesn't it? Using your feet prevents the pips from being crushed, because they're bitter inside. It's the ideal way of doing it. I haven't had so much fun for years. Time to turn this tasty juice into the world's favourite yeah. tipple. Your cellar. Your alchemist den. <laughs> Marco's going to use a fermentation from his first crop of a couple of weeks ago to kickstart the final brew using today's juice. The yeast is from the grapes themselves. I haven't added any commercial yeast. The, the yeast lives on the skin. It strikes me that your process is even more pure than most commercial winemakers, because actually a lot of them do tinker with their wines, adding extra sugar and even some kind of flavorings and, and special yeasts of the, uh, that are not from the grape itself. That's right, yes. So you're really old school pure winemaking here. That's right, yes. Before bottling, Marco will leave the wine to ferment with the skins for at least a week turning it daily. So, would you like to taste uh, <laughs> some of last year's Pinot Noir? <laughs> I hardly dared bring that up. All right, why don't we do that, yeah. I think that's re really rather good. You like it? I do. It's very nice to drink, but I think it's got a greater complexity than, than just about any other British-made red I've, I've ever had. I really think this wine's a corker. But is my emotional involvement clouding my judgment? I want to find out what others think of it. So I've booked a stand at Old Spitalfields Market. In our blind tasting, bottle A is Marco's, bottle B an award-winning English classic that cost £15, bottle C a mid-priced Australian market leader. Free wine! All of them are Pinot Noirs. Wow, that's really different. The first one, to me, was the best one. They're all a nice drop, but they're, they're I've all just nice. had a bit of a preference. Definitely go for A. A yeah. okay. That's a really natural, beautiful fruit. Would you both agree that A was the best? Yes. So definitely go for this one. Yeah, it would. Unknown to Marco, I've also asked some serious wine experts along. It's got a slight spritz on it. But there's some nice fruit in there. Yeah, some nice, nice red cherries and black cherries. Do, do you enjoy that wine? Yes, I do. I think it's a good, light, fresh, easy to drink wine. I think that's really good. It's got good fruit and quite good lane. 
It's, it's actually not bad. Well, thank you. Would you like another little yeah. drop? Yeah. No. Time to let the experts know the true story of this wine. So I'm really glad you like Marco's wine. Yeah, that's his wine, eh? Hey? Indeed, yeah. <laughs> hey. and, indeed, and indeed, you've had the bottom of the bottle too, so... And where's it I was, made? I was just about to repeat. Uh, in Stoke Newington, in my back, in my garden. In your garden in Stoke Newington, well, that's fantastic. Yeah. Isn't that great? It's a, it's, it's a good attempt because Pinot Noir is a really difficult grape to make wine with. In about three months' time, when it's settled down, that's going to be a great wine. You know, good luck with it. Thank you. We asked all our tasters to score the three wines. So, which one excited the most passion? The one that got the, the most number of really high scores. And that was you, by far. Really? Nobody got a 10, but there were lots of 8s and 9s scattered around. And you, you got 10 8s and 9s, ahead of the next best, which was C, which got 6, and B, which got 5. I think that's a pretty staggering performance. I am quite surprised, pleasantly surprised by yeah. yes. And when Marco's 09 vintage achieves greatness, Cheers. I hope he'll Cheers. toast my feet. Cheers.